Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching Angela and Michael on 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. He lied to me again and then did not answer his phone for six hours. How do you know he went out already? He sent me a voice message. Yeah, I, I didn't lie about that. Yes, I went out. My phone called me, me, but I couldn't pick because it was noisy there. Now you see where I'm coming? Uh, so I don't know all the circumstances, obviously. But from the looks of it, she wanted to have a phone date with him of some sort for his birthday, I believe. And she was trying to contact him and he was unreachable and he was out with his friends and he was in a noisy place. And so he turned his phone off or something and he lied to her and he just admitted, yes, I did lie to you. There's something going on here. And I think that if I were to treat them, the hypothesis that I would be working from in my investigation is her quick hostility matched up with his terror of conflict are triggering each other. For example, in the moment, let's say that he made a, a commitment to her that he was going to be on the phone with her during a certain time. And then his friends are like, hey, it's your birthday. Let's go out. And then he's like, yeah, you know what? I can be on the phone with Angela anytime. I'd rather spend some time with my friends on my, on my birthday. And so he's at a crossroads. He, in the moment, uh, a healthy thing to do would be to call her and say, hey, I want to go out with my friends. Is that okay? You can trust me. You know, I, I just, you know, some, some request there, right? And then she would maybe be upset, but obviously not as upset as lying and then finding out about it, out about it later. But instead of being healthy, that requires him to be assertive, that requires him to trust, that requires him to be ready for maybe some hurt and some hostility from her. But instead of choosing that, he chooses to avoid and to lie, to avoid the conflict in the moment to and choose a 10 times bigger conflict in the future. Now, for her, what and probably happens in other situations is something happens where maybe he does kind of make a request and she comes down so hard that it causes him to be much more worried about being assertive or asking for things in the future and or passive aggression, which I haven't talked about yet with him or maybe I have. But one of the consequences of this style of shutting down that Michael seems to exhibit, I don't know, it's completely speculative. But under pressure, he seems to shut down, he seems to avoid and lie. One of the things that can happen with people like that is they suppress anger, they suppress anger, they suppress anger, not uh, towards Angela necessarily, but throughout his entire life, particularly when he was young. Well, that anger has to go somewhere. And one of the places that it will go is through what we call passive aggression or hidden hostility. And one of the ways you can hide what your hostility towards someone is to lie about stuff like this. It's a subconscious move, but it's a compulsion to, ex I want to get back at her for the way that she treats me, but I don't trust her with, or anyone with being straightforward with my anger. I have to be hidden with my anger. Another way to express hidden anger is through cheating. I've seen that a lot clinically as well. So I don't know if that's happening. Let's continue watching. He can't walk outside and say, baby, it's noise in here. I did go out. I'll explain when I get home. It's not about not celebrating his damn birthday. It's that, again, he can't deliver what he says. Right. Angela is wise to see it that way and put it that way. It's not about the birthday celebration. I mean, yeah, that's a little bit of a bummer. But the fact that he lied to me again, it's just so upsetting that he would disrespect me that way, that he doesn't care about me. And it makes me question everything he says. It's just, it's just really destructive to lie. I need to get some answers. Hey, baby. Michael, I've been calling you 50 times. Why didn't you answer my calls? Uh, I'm so... You know how upset you got me all day? What happened, Michael? I was just depart down the streets. I am my, my, my nephew. So we're looking at a scenario that has been played out in front of the cameras frequently, a number of times, probably a lot more than we've even seen, where 
they will have a conflict mainly around him lying and deceiving, and then he admits it, which I want to commend him for, that he just – a lot of people on the show, when they seem to be lying, they don't admit it. So he admits it, and she gets hurt, and then she gets hostile, and she gets uh, angry with him. And he says, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, it'll never happen again, and then it happens again. So what I would be doing with the two of them is really trying to drill down on Michael and figuring out what is going on here. What's the decision? What's the defense that is kicking in? What uh, issue is biting him in the butt here? Because he clearly doesn't want to be lying. He clearly wants to be with Angela. So why is he doing this behavior? But I'm guessing what we're going to see is a repetition of past makeup conversations where he says, I'm so sorry, I'll never do it again. You're right. I'm wrong. Please take me back. And she will have ups and downs of hostility, but eventually level out. Let's let's continue to watch. I just took him out because it was this busy. This is why we have problems. You think you can change what you tell me you're not going to do at the last minute. So in my office, I've had exact conversations like this. And what I would do is if I had a good enough relationship with the Angela in this equation, I would say, Angela, OK, I get it. You're, you're, you're real upset about this. Let's slow down because I think the way you're reacting right now, which I understand, is actually playing into his traumas. The reason why he does this behavior of lying and deceiving, I think, is because he's terrified of this anger that you have, which is justified. Believe me, it's understandable. He lied to you. It's it's normal to be angry. You should be angry. But the way you're coming across, I think, frightens him. And then I would want to talk with him and have him talk about that. Because if she were able to stay on her primary emotions of, you know what, Michael, when you do this to me, it just really hurts. It really makes me question if you really love me. It's really painful. I want to get angry, but I, I, I feel like that's probably not fair, but honestly, it just hurts. And then, you know, cry. One of the things I actually work with clients like Angela is working on how they can actually cry more easily because one, you deserve to cry when you're hurt. And two, it helps you to recognize, oh, I'm not really, I'm not really angry. I'm more just really hurt right now. Also, it communicates very quickly to the other person. And if he understood that she is in pain when he does this. I'm guessing he would refrain from doing it in the future. But if we have this repetition of this cycle where he will make a mistake and she gets super angry, I think that causes him to bury a bunch of feelings that he has, including anger. And then through hidden hostility, passive aggression, he will continue to uh, hurt her in ways that he it subconsciously feels like he's asserting himself, but of course it's not really asserting himself. It's just being passive aggressive. You have a lying problem. You went up with a goofball and you want me to know that. That's what I think. Yes, it is. Well, how can I believe you? How can I believe you? I don't believe nothing you say. Oh, I'm just in my neighborhood. Well, that's where you got your BJ at in your damn neighborhood. Michael just hasn't lost my... Right. So I don't recommend people talk like this when you're in this state, but it's understandable. She's saying, how am I supposed to believe you? There's been so many lies. And there was the infidelity that happened. So obviously she hasn't recovered from that, which is natural. It takes a long time to recover from infidelity. So it's upsetting, but it's predictable that without couples therapy, their issues are compounding, the lies are compounding, the pain is compounding, the hostility is compounding, the potential hidden aggression is compounding and getting worse and maybe more frequent. If he ever cheated on me, my mind would go here and here and there, but one direction I'm gonna be right. That's why I think four ways. So why didn't you answer the damn phone, Michael? I know you'll be upset. So I decided when I get home, I'll talk to you. Okay, so that's interesting. He said, that in the moment, I instead of calling you in the moment, I lied because I knew you were going to be upset and I told myself I would talk to you later. That's an interesting way of seeing the world, right? I knew you were going to get upset, so I lied to you. What? <laughs> like, that's not a healthy way of approaching the world. Uh, and, okay, she's going to get angry at, the, at you at the moment, maybe. She said that she wasn't going to be angry, and I kind of believe her. 
maybe a little bit angry, maybe a little bit hurt, but to lie is going to cause her to be 10 times more hurt, right? So what is going on there, my friend? <laughs> like, <laughs> I knew you're going to get angry at me. So, I, so that points to the passive aggressive hypothesis that a lot of people, when I talk with the Michaels of the world, and I don't, this is completely speculative, but I've talked with other people who suffer from this. It's a condition. Passive aggressive is a personality type, and it is born out of traumas, usually because of your anger was suppressed by someone who was very powerful and dominant, possibly abusive when you were very young. You could never communicate anger in a healthy, upfront way. You always had to suppress it and communicate it through hidden ways. It, it's a thing, and I, I've seen it before. It's something that a lot of people don't know about, including clinicians. If you want to listen to my deep dive, several hours, passive aggressive personality disorder, you can listen to my full deep dive if you're a patron of the podcast. I actually really enjoyed going into that disorder because it explained a lot of things that I'd seen in my personal life and in my clinical life that I never really understood before. And some of you have even emailed me and talked about your own passive aggression. You talk about how when you suppress your anger, you will express it through hidden ways, even secret ways, like breaking into your partner's computer and, and just reading their emails or something as a way of getting back at them for something. And it, and it feels like a compulsion. It feels almost like an addiction for some people. But anyway, so when I've treated people like this, at the core of their issue is this, it feels justified to them because uh, let me see if I can explain this. So as they're growing up, they are experiencing un unnecessary anger, like unjustified anger, unreasonable anger from other people. Other people are being angry at them, abusive to them, and they kind of know it. They, they're looking at it as just like, this is unfair, and I am angry about it. This is unjust. The way I'm being treated is unfair. I'm being treated unfairly. At the core of the passive aggressive personality is a, is a deep, deep feeling of unfairness, and justifiably so because of the way they were raised. But they retain that into later into adult life, and they're, they're walking around with this constant sense of, I am being treated unfairly, even when they're not. Now, you could argue that she is treating him unfairly sometimes when she's very aggressive and very hostile with him. And in that moment, he's like, it's happening again. I'm being treated unfairly, and I'll, I'll show them. And we all have that impulse, right? When someone hurts us, we, you know, we have an unfortunate impulse of revenge, of if they're going to do that to me, then I'm going to do this to them. It could be as small as your spouse saying something like, well, you never pick up the garbage uh, or you, know, you never do the dishes and then, you, and then that hurts you and then you want to get revenge and you say, well, you never clean the bathroom. You know, that, that's essentially a revenge effort. Not all the time, but it, it, it often is. So there's some normalcy to that. But if you have a lifetime of feeling unfairly treated and a lifetime of suppressed anger, then in the moment you're just like, you know what? Screw that person for making me feel like I'm afraid to tell them what I wanted. It's my birthday. I want to hang out with my friends. And if I call her, she's going to get angry like she always does. But And this perspective is fueled by traumas from the past that are kind of superimposed on the scenario. And so screw her. I, you know what? I don't, I'm going to lie to her, and I don't have any problem with it because she, she's making me lie to her. You know, sh she's unreasonable. The lie is justified given how unreasonable she is. And then you have situations like this where you trigger the other person, they get angry, and then you see, I, I knew it, of course, she was going to be unreasonable. Look at her right now. Now, I don't know if that's going on inside of Michael, but I've seen that before in people that I've treated. Let's continue watching. So you sat there knowing I was mad five to six damn hours. You, you had no respect for me, man. I can't trust you, Michael. Do you not constantly lie to me, Michael? I'll talk to you, Oh, well, thank God for that. Just partial time. Wow. <laughs> I mean, is it foot and mouth disease again cropping up for Michael? She says, do you lie to me? And he says, not all the time. <laughs> I mean, 
I, I'll commend him for this. He's honest about his dishonesty because usually we don't see that. But it's an interesting thing to say. It's an interesting thing to admit. Uh, yeah, that would be very upsetting if, 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 any, if, if any of us were in Angela's shoes and we and our partner said, well, I don't lie to you all the time. I mean, what? Well, hell, I feel better now. I'm telling you, Michael, you are killing this relationship. I'm not bringing you all the way to America if you're still lying to me, Michael. I don't care how little the lies. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Now, I'm going to sneak around trying to find out what you lied about since I was home. Baby, I'll make it up to you, okay? Yeah, so it's going the same as it always does. Yeah, I'll make it up to you. I'm sorry. I'll make it up to you. Take me back. I'm sorry. Please, I'm sorry. It's a misunderstanding. I lied to you. I'm sorry. And... No introspection, no therapy, no, hey, I have this issue, I need help with, like, nothing. So, of course, we're probably just going to see this throughout their relationship. And I'm guessing y'all know because you've seen it, and this is why y'all have been asking me to watch this couple for the past number of months. This is make or break us, honestly, because I, I, I don't deserve to be treated like this. I'll make it what it, okay? Just fix this, because... Just fix it. Okay. All right. You're lying. Bye. All right. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.